Hi, I'm Paris, and my neighborhood in Austin was recently added to the city's home composting program. That means a truck came and dropped off a 32-gallon green bin and some instructional material about how to compost about two months ago. And for the first couple weeks on trash day, nobody in the neighborhood seemed to be putting out their green compostable bin. We were trying to figure out how we were going to set it up to collect the compostable material in our homes and get it out to the bin on what kind of schedule and do we wait till that fills up completely or do we just bring it out one third full once a week. Most of the neighborhood has sorted that out now. So on our trash pickup day every week, almost everyone has their green bins out. I don't know how much they have in theirs. Our bins usually less than half full. So that's at least 16 gallons a week from our house that isn't going into the landfill that's going to be composted. It's a good thing. It's not as much as they advertised when they were talking about this a little bit beforehand about your compost may be a significant portion of your weekly trash. So you may be able to get a smaller regular trash bin. And here we pay based on the size of that bin. So if you had half of your trash being compostable and you could downsize to a smaller regular trash bin, you could save money on your waste bill every month. But it's not to be for my family, at least not yet. We're still working on it and still improving. Our first challenge though was to figure out how we were going to store the compostable material in the kitchen in a sanitary way that didn't get smelly, that didn't have insects, that didn't leak and make a mess, and how we were going to do that without using plastic bags. Now if you have a small family or you don't produce a lot of compost daily, you could probably go with a bucket. Uh, we've got four people here and, and myself especially, I eat a plant-based diet, so I produce quite a bit of waste. And the other thing we all agreed on is we wanted to have a lid for the compost container. Here in Central Texas, lots of cockroaches, no matter how you try, they get in, flies, mosquitoes. We knew we might get some fruit flies with a compost container, but we didn't want to be feeding any other insects. So here's the container we decided on. Here's the eight gallon bin that we went with. It does have a foot pedal which is very handy when you're peeling an apple or something to drop it right in there. And we picked it up at our local Target for about $30. You can find out more about it at the link down below this video. And the next thing we needed was some kind of a bag or liner for that trash can. I could have taken it out every couple days and dumped it, but it's not really designed for that with the way that the pop-up lid works. And I also didn't really like the idea of the food being loose in the compostable bin outside of the house sitting there heating up and attracting insects, possibly rodents, for a week. For the first couple weeks, we tried paper bags. They fit in that pretty well. I would double bag a bag and take it out maybe after about three or four days. But I was very careful about not putting really wet items like tea bags or um, watermelon, cantaloupe rind, where I thought it might leak a lot of liquid and come right through the paper. So taking care, I was able to lift the paper bags out without the bottom falling out with a couple, three days worth of compost, dry compost materials in it and get it out to the bin outside. But we weren't really producing that much compost to put in the bin by filtering out all of the wet and juicy stuff. Regular trash bags like we use in our regular 13 gallon trash bin in the kitchen were out because they're not compostable. So I went online and researched compostable bags. Two main things we were looking for one was that it was really compostable and it would break down over time and not increase pollution in the environment. The other thing though, is in the short term, did not want it to break down. We were afraid that a bag made from biodegradable plants would biodegrade too quickly, especially when it got wet and it would soak through, stuff would leak out or carrying the bag out to the compostable bin, the bottom would fall out of it. Here's the bag we decided on. This is the 13 gallon size bag. There's a hundred in the box. We paid about $30 for it. Find out more about it at the link down below this video. The bags are made in China, but they say they meet the standards for compostability in Europe and the United States. Here on the bottom, it mentions that these bags meet the standards for the ASTM D6400. That's the standard that it needs to meet to be compostable in the United States. But what does that standard really mean and how compostable are compostable bags? Well, you would think they would turn into good compost based on the name, but that's not really the standard that they're looking for. Let me pull one out here. So this material is made from plants and vegetables, according to the box. And when it is disposed of in a properly maintained compostable, municipal compostable facility, 
um, it will break down over a certain amount of time, a certain percent of it will anyway. Whereas if you just have this out in your yard and throw it out under the leaves, that's not a carefully controlled municipal facility and it may take a lot longer to break down. But if you have it where they provide heat and you know the stuff gets turned over every so often, exposed to oxygen and new material, the microbes in the environment will break down most of the carbon that's in this into atmospheric carbon. I think there's a few months time in which point 90% of it has to be dispensed with that way. And of the remainder, it's more about the size that over a certain amount of time, this will um, break down into small enough pieces that it won't impede the growth of other plants if it's used with compost. And that's the final point, the um, heavy metals, that it won't contain heavy metals or impede plant growth. So the standards for a compostable bag aren't that it makes great compost, it's that it's not detrimental to plants that are provided with compost that have this in it. Which makes me think there's still something to be said for paper bags, but they do leak. The box says to store these in a cool, dry place. Heat and moisture are some of the things that start this breaking down, which you don't want to have happen, especially before you've gotten through all hundred of them. And so in addition to not leaking, you want them to be fairly puncture resistant, able to hold in pokey trash. So, I can, I'm stretching it out a little bit out of shape, but I'm not poking holes in it doing that. Let's try a finger poke. Let me get some of the fresh material here. Finger poking. Okay, took a moderate amount of pressure to poke a hole in it. Let me compare it to one of our regular plastic trash bags. This is a 13 gallon hefty trash bag, so same size as this. This is a 0.9 millimeter thickness and the compostable bag is 0.8 eight, seven mil. So that's pretty much the same. The thickness is the same. Okay. I'm having a harder time deforming it with just my hands, but I can do it a little bit. Okay. And let's try the finger poke here. That took more effort. You probably saw it stretched more before it gave way. So that's how both bags behave right out of the box. The concern, of course, especially with the compostable, is how does it behave over time when it's exposed to moisture? And we put a new bag in our kitchen recycling bin. So this Curver Deco trash can. We've had the recycling in it for about a month every day now. And I do notice when I pull a bag out, a little bit of moisture, like condensation, not so much like leaks, that I can see in it. So I don't put another bag in right away. I usually wait about an hour, then put the new compostable bag in it so the moisture that's accumulated in there has some time to evaporate. There are a couple little holes at the bottom so it's not completely watertight seal. And the 13 gallon bag and the eight gallon container is a little bit overkill, but better too big than too small. This is how it fits. And then I'll show you our outdoor 32 gallon recycling bin that's picked up by the city once a week and how a week's worth of trash in these bags holds up. So let's see how the composting bags have done this week. Oh, got bugs on top. This bag is just for uh, this morning. This bag would have been from oh, three days ago. Pretty heavy, but still holding up. I don't see it leaking. It definitely hasn't broken open. Ah, okay. <laughs> this one is from about oh, five or six days ago. <sighs> Little hole there, I see. And from a full week ago, I see liquid in the bottom of this. It did rain during the week. I'm not sure if it's from that or what might have leaked out of the bags. Oh. This is from one week ago. The bag has not broken open, but it may well be leaking juices. Still pretty good. This has got it weight. Oh, at least about eight to 10 pounds, I think. And it's still pretty secure. 
So I've been pleased with how these Primo bags have held up, haven't had any big leaks or accidents here. And, and if they do start to break open 10 days after you use them, well, that's fine with me because we have the weekly pickup here. And so they're already at the processing facility and it's probably best that they start to biodegrade there as soon as possible. So if your neighborhood's getting on the composting bandwagon, I think we have a pretty good solution here with a bin of about that size that can handle big chunks of watermelon, cut flowers we often have and have no problem fitting them into that as well. And so long as you take the bag out of the kitchen collection bin every two or three days and put it in the outside bin, wheel that to the curb once a week and have it picked up, you shouldn't have too many problems with smells, sanitation, or too many bugs. Find out more about the kitchen bin and the compostable bags we use at the links down below this video, and I'll see you on the next review.